Hey everybody, David and Michael. This is Michael, uh, Aerial Influence. That's the name of our business. We talk about drones, especially yeah. for like businesses, agriculture, police, fire, search and rescue, that sort of thing. So if that interests you, thank you for stopping by. This is uh, probably the right place for you, I guess, right? Yeah, I would think so. I would think so. Yeah. Um, all right, well, thank you for being here today. We're gonna do a little talk on mapping. Um, yep. You know, obviously mapping is a big thing in the industry, although a lot it's new to a lot of people of how you use a drone yeah. uh, to map. Um, so I think right. one of the first questions that most people ask us is like, what kind of a drone do I need to map? And you have, right. a, you have a good answer for this usually. Well, I mean, technically, you can use any drone that has uh, it's geotagged with um, basically GPS. the GPS coordinates. Um, from there, then you can take it into most of the uh, mapping software, uh, like um, you know, Terra DJI has one. Yeah, uh, Pix4D has one. Drone Deploy. There's there's some other ones out there that uh, do a pretty good job. But I would say that those are probably the three big ones in yeah. the drone world. Now they're going to be depending on the drone, depending on the wind conditions, that kind of thing. Cause right. the GPS is only going to keep the drone so stable. So like if you're trying to map with like um, mini two or yeah, uh, like it, a Mavic air two, you're going to be able to make a map. It just might not be very accurate. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's the, the accuracy is going to be lower, obviously. Um, uh, you know different cameras rolling shutter versus mechanical shutter so you, mechanical shutter is kind of like stuff that's in the phantom four and that's, right. that's i mean that really is kind of like um the good you know go-to especially mapping. especially if you're looking for some if you're on a budget yeah you know if, if yeah. you're needing something i mean i it's it's under two grand now. I don't know the exact price on it, but yeah, something like it, that. It's relatively inexpensive when you're comparing it to you know enterprise drones like the ones we typically right uh, like we typically deal with. But it is kind of the tried and true drone because it's got that that mechanical shutter. It's got that uh, twenty megapixel camera on it, I believe. Right. Um. So you're going to get relatively high quality maps out of you know just a regular consumer drone. So yeah, and and um, you know, so if you've got something like that, I mean, you could you know, use ground control points, you know, like the little, you know, squares with the X's and that kind of stuff. And yeah. that can kind of help you align the map a little bit better. Um, then, you know, if, if, if you want to go, you know, if you've never done anything or whatever, and you're going for the biggest and best, you know, then you can look at something with like RTK um, on it. Yep. So that's this guy. So this is the RTK module right here. And essentially, this is kind of like a Phantom 4, uh, but this one is, is specifically the multispectral. So it's got six, six lenses on there, and it's got different, um, basically, wavelengths. And what that does is it basically takes six pictures every time it snaps a photo. It's, right. sna it's snapping six individual ones. And then when you bring it back in to stitch, then you're, you know, essentially... Uh, using different uh, lenses to make the different indices that will then tell you, you know, crop health, that right. kind of thing. Different. So, so this one, the DJI multispectral that you're looking at right now, um, this one is mostly for agriculture, just so people yeah. know. There's another one. It's the Phantom 4 RTK. It looks just like this one that you're looking at here. Uh, it's just got one lens, the, the same camera that's on the standard Phantom 4, but right. the difference in this is RTK. And um, RTK typically, when people ask us, and yeah. if you've listened to our or watched our podcast before, uh, it is GPS on steroids. It's yeah. going to give you that centimeter level accuracy if mm -hmm. you're wanting if you're needing a highly precise map that you want to take measurements from, you're yeah. probably going to want to use RTK because it's, it's going to be the most stable and the most accurate or, or, or some version of it. You know, I'm sure there's going to be, you know, there's definitely people out there who's like, Oh, I can get the same accuracy, you know, without RTK, but they're, they're probably using something with like ground control points right. or maybe uh, post-processing, you know, they, they have, you can actually bring in, some of the RTK data after the fact, and they yeah. call that PPK, post-processing kinematics, and RTK is real-time kinematics. Uh, kinematics. So you're using a base station. The base station is basically con connecting to satellites. It's getting a signal. Then it uses basically a radio uh, transmitter to transmit that to you know the drone and the remote, mm -hmm. and then it is taking those little corrections and basically you know aligning it 
perfectly yeah. and and know, the entire precise. times it's it's keeping it in line so as the wind blows and it gets off the track a little bit it's it, gonna, yeah. it, it corrects it it brings it right back in right uh real quick guys you know feel free to send in any questions any comments uh you know comment on our clothing whatever you'd like to do <laughs> um but yeah don't don't be afraid to just say hi if you want to or yeah. on all these different social media platforms so hopefully uh, we'll get some questions here pretty soon yeah um, um but i know specifically we're talking about the dj multispectral today because you did and here it is again one more time yeah. um because you did a map yesterday right um, yeah i did i did a map and i i actually um yeah you can you can bring it up okay um i i actually kind of wanted to go over some of the indices that um dji uses so you know the 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 old one tried and true is the ndvi these these things have indexes have been around since i think the early 70s huh. um so they've been just using them for you know, it's basically we had satellite data, yeah. but now that we've got, uh, you know, UASs, I mean, it's kind of nice because then we can get underneath the cloud cover. We don't yeah. have to worry about, you know, when that satellite's coming around or whatnot, but essentially, um, these NDVI, GNDVI, these are all basically, it's taking the lenses and it's an equation yeah you know it might be you know something minus this divided by this you know whatever and you know it's it's essentially taking uh you know four six five six whatever you know lenses. whichever ones you want yeah and, yeah and then it's making the equation so then these indices will kind of give you an idea of different things going on like so one I thought kind of interesting. The NDRE has been shown that the index gives insight into chlorophyll content of crops later into the growing season, whereas some of them are, you know, are, are seen more like the OSAVI that does soil conditions a little bit more, and that's more of early growth. So, you know, you, the, the field is basically empty. Hmm has maybe some saplings or seedlings or whatever growing. So it, it's, you know, more for the early stages. So it's good to know what you're looking at because, or, or what these are, because what you're looking at, you know, if it's late in the season or early in the season, it could, you know, be- Could change. It, 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 yeah, I mean, you, you wanna make sure that you're lining things up right. And this is, this is some of the stuff where, I mean, you can, dive into a big rabbit hole with this kind of stuff right and you, know? you have i mean you're one of the people you know you know you don't you don't just walk the walk like you love this stuff um, I, I mean i do like it yeah yeah I, I do, but um yeah i mean there's there's only so many so many hours in the day yeah right um where you know some of these you you almost need like uh um you know crop scientist yeah you know to be you know, someone that's looked at the field so you know you're ground truth in it with you know, the, what you're getting from, from a drone yeah, and then kind of pushing those two together and seeing, okay, where, cause, cause you also have to kind of set thresholds too. Yeah. So like if you're doing something where, cause this could help you, the multispectral could help you, um, do, uh, you know, with your spraying operation and you could basically do variable rate. Yeah. So you know, you've got your field, you've done the multispectral, and then you get, you have these different shades, you know, of, of, of color. Um, and they're signifying, okay, here's more stress this is less stress. This is not very much stress at all. Mm -hmm. So you, you have to get kind of a baseline. So, okay, I don't want to treat the stuff that looks great, Yeah, but I do want to tr treat the, definitely treat the stuff that looks really bad. So you're giving a threshold okay here's really bad here's really good and then when when the spraying drone goes out it's it knows to apply you know a little less to the stuff that it doesn't looks, need it that doesn't need it yeah apply more to the stuff that does and then you know maybe not apply anything to the stuff that you know doesn't need it so and, and you know we <clears throat> talk about this too is that you know each of these drones they all have their own purpose and you know uh, Phantom 4 Multispectral is a great drone to have by itself. A DJI Agress T10 is a great drone to have by itself. You can do a lot of things with both. But yeah. when you combine them, right. that's really when you're getting everything that you need. When you put these two things together with Terra, right. uh, that's really... Yeah, and, and so right now they kind of have, 
you know, if you got the whole like ecosystem, let's say yeah. for DJI or, and, and again, uh, like Pix 4D will stitch multispectral from this drone. Right. And you can also output, uh, I believe shape files and KML files and that kind of stuff from Pix 4D to, you know, a file, which then could be read by this. Right. So I'm, we're not necessarily, you know, trying to shove any one down anybody's throat sure. but um the idea is that they had the phantom 4 rtk so not the multi-spectral but the the beefed up phantom 4 right as basically uh the drone that goes out and maps all the fields and you can do 2d and you can do high resolution 3d for doing stuff like um uh orchards and whatnot yeah so that's going to give you the really high resolution stuff the really high resolution 3d maps and 2d maps right uh that can be pulled in and you can start planning uh through dji terra and that kind of stuff so then from there you know that can be outputted to you know spray a field as well yeah um but the kind of the component you're missing is you know crop health Mm -hmm. You know, so if you want to get into that, then there's you need the help from somebody else, right? <laughs> well, well, and and you need the Phantom Four multispectral. Yeah. So that so it's kind of like the Phantom Four RTK is is for the initial planning, the mapping, all that kind of stuff, and then the multispectral is kind of like okay, now I'm on my way. You know, I'm starting to grow stuff, in and you're gonna kind of see how it progresses and see if there's problems. Yeah. And you can identify that within the multispectral. And then you can you could spit that out information out to one, of the, T, spray one of the T uh, series agricultural drones. Yeah. So uh, that's the, you know we're putting a lot of information out there, especially if it's people that if you're not super yeah. familiar uh, with mapping. But I think the important thing for people, you know, we work with a lot of police. Obviously, agriculture. The police department will use them for like crash scene reconstruction, right? Um, that sort of thing. But their biggest concern is always like, well, how hard is it to like build this map? Like, how hard is it to like where does the drone need to fly and take pictures? All that kind of stuff. Yeah. And and the good thing is that these drones are really really smart. So you go in and you can draw a box essentially of like here's the area that I would like to map, yep. and it's going to automatically come up with its own formula of where the drone needs to take pictures. You can adjust that. You can, you know, uh, you can go lower in height. You can change the speed of the drone. All that sort of yeah. stuff. Um, but it really is not super complicated to get the pictures that you need to make the map. It's right. taking those pictures after the fact and with the multispectral, knowing what to do with them once you yeah. built your map, but then in general, knowing what to do with it, you know, knowing the proper mapping software you want to use, whether it's Pix4D, Terra, uh, drone deploy, drone deploy. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's going through all of those steps and, you know, none of these are going to be right. At, you're not going to go up take the pictures and then load up your map into your computer. Right. Um, you know, you're going to have to process the maps. Right. Yeah. Uh, and comparatively, you know, three or four years ago, it would take you all night to do a map. Yeah. Right. Now, I mean, now, now it's, now it's pretty quick. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, especially, you know, if you're doing some cloud based or something like that, then it's going up and, and, and yeah, it could be eight hours or something like that. Yeah. Or if you're doing something with, Pix 4D and even Terra in the beginning, some of the big maps would take a while, but um, I guess getting the right, getting the right software, getting the right computer, that kind of thing, figuring out what you need to be able to, to do all to, this. Yeah, it, what what kind of end product you need, um, because you know for the police a lot of times, I mean we don't want to necessarily tell them other than you know uh, Pix 4D because. I mean, that's what everybody it seems, uses. <laughs> it seems like 99% of them are using that. They're, yeah. e they're either not in it yet, you know, not using the drone for crash scene reconstruction. Right. Or they're using Pix 4D. Yeah. Um, but they usually always use the DJI drone too. Yeah. So, um, you know, I mean, there, there's a lot of ways of going about doing something and getting pretty much the same, same result, result out of different it. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
we should we should do a video sometime and i'm sure that there are others out there on the ground control points yeah and how you use those because i think a right. lot of people you know you may not understand exactly what that is and uh, we could go out and do a little demonstration of it yeah. just so people at home know what we're talking about um and it'll allow someone on a lower budget to get higher uh, accuracy max yeah, too. It, so. it, yeah it could it definitely could yeah um yeah because there's a lot of different uh companies out there kind of doing different stuff with that but finally um, uh grant thank you so much he's our first commenter of the day he says he says very cool discussion thanks for sharing thank you yeah. we appreciate you <laughs> you're the only one that's watching apparently well, we have a, a good audience though so right. thank you <laughs> um but yeah I'll, I'll show you so you know we've said it time again we're not farmers and we've got a, a <laughs> we've got a beautiful field of uh combination of grass and weeds out there <laughs> it's beautiful and uh so what, what we've been trying to do is actually get it to more um you know turf you yeah know, grass been mowing it down spraying it for weeds that right kind of thing. so we thought well let's do a multi-spectral and see if we can see where you know, we would need to do some overseeding, you know, yeah. for grass seed. So typically, if you were to buy these drones, you would actually contact a crop specialist. We're sort of <laughs> winging it, um, which is, you know, if you, I mean, there's nothing back that we're going to destroy. So if we, exactly. if, you know, yeah. um, but typically you would talk to a crop analyst and that's not, like yeah. you said, we're, we're drone guys, right, not right. crop analysts. So, yeah. uh, so you want to show them yeah, the I'll, map I'll, here? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll show you. Tell me when you're ready. Okay. So yeah so this this was uh stitched in terra so this is the rgb so just basically the color map um and that's probably roughly about 15 acres or so that's 10 right or no why are you yeah, counting I mean, around the edges yeah there? i mean around the edges but i mean most of it's 10. so <clears throat> and we we did go out there as well and we we looked to see where the grass seemed to be growing more and so the grass is growing more in this red these red areas and the green areas they are the grass is growing less yeah you know, it's it's kind of uh because you know there was i mean they did you know pumpkins back there they did all kinds of stuff so it was it was you know a field um so the gndvi i guess this one was more late stage so i guess the grass is established mm -hmm. so it's it's showing even less grass than i guess the ndvi mm -hmm. so you can see this is where the least grass is so the green is actually not good the red is good so the red is good in this picture green not but, so much uh real quick uh ella bariki um so this map that we're showing you right now was actually uh shot with the phantom 4 multi-spectral so yes this is yes. you are able to map with the multi-spectral yep sorry go ahead michael um yeah and so i mean again i i don't know a lot about these indices and and you know again you kind of have to do you have to have obviously some some uh background in some background in it but you also need i think to have some boots on the ground and you know this kind of data you know to really see okay yeah. you know you, you've got you've what got this to thing compare. is telling you yeah so the drone the 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 uh, drone itself is amazing the software is amazing which yeah. the last piece of the puzzle is knowing someone how to read it you know right. so right uh that's that's the, the other cool thing about this now i don't this one we kind of talked about this this uh yeah. piece right up here I don't, i'm not you should I don't zoom know. in can you zoom in on the map a little sure. bit just so they can get a better idea of so yeah we're not sure what why it came up purple like that uh especially that's got to be an error with the scent with the camera or something on that maybe specific. something yeah but uh yeah oh i was gonna say <clears throat> one of the cool things that you do not get with basically any other multi-spectral is that you can get a live ndvi you know so you can pop this thing up in the air and it will you, you instead of just getting you know the color camera yeah. you can actually switch it to an ndvi or one of the indices i don't know if you can do it do, i don't think you can do all of the indices but you can do some of the indices and just pop it up there so you could have done a map and then a week later you're like i don't want to do a map but i want to check that one area or whatever yeah and it could give you some some data yeah you know and basically you know right there at the edge of the field you know, you've got the information right. that you need and and you're ready to to make some changes basically right. yeah so i did the same thing on um pix 40 fields 
Now they have different ones. And I, so I, I did all of the indices, but I'm not sure if, because Pix4D hooks up with um, like MicaSense and MicaSense has the red edge and they have the blue edge and yeah. they have, so there's, you know, so they, they may have a few different indices in here that might, that I might've stitched, but the data would might not be correct because the camera on this might be a little bit different than you know th there might be like some bandwidths that, that are not accounting for that this doesn't have that so you you can do more cameras through pix4d because pix4d is you know a software suite and so they're they're basically taking the big guys and you know the big players yeah and saying okay all right we'll 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 figure out how to you know stitch the P4M, or we'll figure out how to stitch uh, the MicaSense ones because a lot of people have MicaSense. Yeah. So, anyways, um, so this is that's this is the GNDVI, and if you, uh, I can zoom in a little I can, bit for him if you can. Yeah. So you can kind of see where this kind of flip flops. So the green is actually where our grass is probably growing more. And the red in this picture, reddish yellow, is where it's not growing as well. Mm -hmm. And it is kind of flip-flopped if you look at the GNDVI here. So here's GNDVI for Terra. GNDVI for Pix4D. So they are very similar. They're just the colors are flip-flopped. The colors are different. And, and you can associate... You can make the colors different. Yeah, it's kind—it's kind of like thermal, you know, where yeah. where you, you know, can adjust it to be a different palette or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like, what do you want to be really hot? So Blue. on the left side of the screen, and actually on the right side, you'll see there's like red lines um, on the on the left and the right. So those are both roadways that are completely bare, um, and yeah. that people have made it. There's some stuff going on over in the field, and uh, they've yeah, made a is, little dirt road gravel. there, and you can, oh yeah, that's right, it's gravel. Dirt, dirt and gravel. Yeah, yeah, but you can see there that that's where nothing is growing right now, indicated by that red line. So, right. Yeah. Yeah, and it's interesting because it looks like, I feel like Tara, see it, it really like it so on the right hand side that is pavement so i don't know i mean that is like a, a paved golf cart path okay oh that's and right so yeah. it's really showing that as like a you know like a gray black yeah but on the other side here which is gravel and dirt it's it's showing green which would be on pix 4d side it'd be red so nothing's growing there yeah um but yeah, I, I I I do think this has a lot of value, especially with someone that's in the industry and you know has been that that knows their fields. Um, you give them something like this, and 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 sometimes you may may be able to find something before you can actually see it. Yeah, you know? yeah, that's the idea. It's using a few cameras that are not in our uh, spectral range, so to speak. You know? Right, we we can't see them; they're invisible. Yeah, but but if you stitch it and put it into the program then it you know makes it makes it like a visual representation so we can actually understand a little bit more got it um so the other important thing is you know this drone the phantom 4 multi-spectral um you can't so it's the 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 images so it's got the six cameras but mm -hmm. they're small they're like what three two, uh two two megapixels so so they're they're small you don't need them to be big for the multi-spectral stuff but say you wanted to use the RGB camera on here to make a 3D model, you could, uh, but it you, wouldn't be very. It you, you could make a 2D. You can't make a. You couldn't make an ortho, uh, ortho with the the color camera. You know, I, I, I it'd be low quality, I, I, obviously. But yeah, I think it'd be real low quality. I, I yeah, I, probably not. It, it pro. I mean, it, it probably. That's what I thought. Yeah, that's why. I, that's why I brought much. it up. Yeah, and that's <laughs> good. Kidding. No, that's good. <laughs> and and that's the thing. That's why. You know, it's hard to tell people like, oh, okay, if you want the whole agricultural suite, you know, to yeah. be able to do everything, you know, you kind of need like something like just a Phantom Four, you know, regular one. Yeah. I mean, obviously, if you can get the RTK, that's great. Um, then the the nice thing too is that that RTK base station, 
um, will work for the Agras. It'll work for both the Phantoms. It'll work for the Matrice, you know? Yeah. So, and, and before they had kind of individual ones, but now they've kind of opened them all up. All so up, that you so can interchange nice. them. Yeah. That is, yeah. that is really nice. And it's because probably... most of the time you're not, you're not going to be using this the same time you're going to be using this. For the most part, right, right. If yeah. you're if you're one guy that has bought both of these things and you've got the RTK base, right. station, you're likely not using them at the same time. So just so people know, the RTK base station, and I know you sort of mentioned this, but it's a relatively big piece of uh, yeah. you know machinery that not machinery, but it's a yeah. big accessory for this drone essentially. That's yeah. really going to unlock the full potential of it in terms of. Uh, the accuracy you can though if you don't want an RTK base station and you're in an area with uh, the N trip N trip uh, uh, RTK network yeah uh, you know there are some free in some states I think Iowa has I know they've got a free one uh, yeah. and there are some other states that have free RTK networks but then there are others that you pay a subscription for right if you do that if you're able to log into one of those you don't need the base station for yeah, this you... or this or or like the DJI Phantom 4 RTK. Yeah. So I mean, I and and I've heard that you know people will will have both. Yeah. And they'll say you know the the RTK base station just works. Yeah. Um. So yes, theoretically, you you should be able to type in the you know username password whatever you know. If I'm sure there's like some type of domain address that yeah. you have to link to. Um. All that can basically go into the remote. And then you, you then you're pulling that RTK data, you know, from from the the ether <laughs> into the drone itself. Got yeah. It. But, so if you're somebody that is watching this and not necessarily interested in agriculture, you're interested in drone mapping in general. Yeah. Um, you know, the one you're going to want to use is like the, something like the Phantom Four or the Phantom Four RTK. You're not going right. to need a multi-spectral for that. But those are the ones where you're going to be able to make that ortho mosaic, like 3D map, where you can take those measurements and you can take measurements in a flat map too, to an extent. Yeah. But you can even get the height of a building, all sorts right. of different things with those 3D models. Um, so you can do that with uh, the Phantom Four. Uh, the Phantom 4 RTK and then the regular Phantom 4 consumer model, mm -hmm. you can make those ortho mosaics with, with those drones. And uh, right. those are really cool to look at. We did one yeah. at the Carolina Panther stadium that Michael did. That was very yeah. cool. And uh, yep. that, that stuff, when people get into it, it's sort of an addiction, I think Yeah, uh, for yeah. people to like, Oh, I want to go map that too. Cause yeah, you, you get that little <laughs> curve on the facade or whatever, and it drives you crazy. You just yeah. want everything to be, kind of perfect but yeah i mean and and they've made it now where you can do um 2d maps multi-spectral maps 3d maps thermal maps as thermal well maps, yeah. yeah yeah um we did uh remember when we did we did like a 3d map as our base then we pulled it back into terra and then we were able to then use that map to then plan another flight with waypoints oh yeah we, oh yeah we, yeah we, we did, did we, we made did. a whole video about that yeah, yeah so we basically made it go around the um driveway and, around the driveway and basically it would go at different heights and come down and we went had it go underneath, underneath a tree and then you can have it turn and stuff so and, and it was and, completely automated so right. once michael made this little map for it and hit go it just flew by itself changed heights all the good stuff that we're talking yeah. about and and, you, and then you're using a map that's already an rtk map so you're basically using like this 3d model bubble almost yeah and uh, you know they talked about it being really good for um you know uh like scouting for movies oh yeah you know? yeah I mean, right you could even set up like <laughs> camera shots and stuff Ex like that. exactly like if you're if you're somebody working in hollywood and you're needing to go out and do some like you said location scouting or whatever yeah. I mean, you could get one of these drones up in the air and 10 minutes later have everything you need to go back and make a 3D model of that location to show right. the director or whoever's involved um, that needs to make those decisions. Um, you know, and then the director themselves, after the fact, could literally, like Michael said, plan the shots out that he wants yeah. to make 
Um, so really in, in so many different industries, you know, um, obviously the multispectral is mostly for agriculture, but yeah. all of these other drones um, can be used in several different ways. Even yeah. the spraying drones are not just, you know, for spraying crops. It's right. mosquito abatement. It's we fed a bunch of koi fish at like the, one of the largest koi far farms in America um because it's got a spreader on it as well yeah. um, there's covid sanitation uh you know all sorts of things and and basically every i feel like once a week we get a call from somebody that we and we haven't heard of their you know use case their use case like yeah. oh we hadn't even thought of that yet right. you know uh, we talked about this one of our clients one of the big drone uh, just to be able to cross i know i love this story because i think it's but. interesting um but he wanted to use a drone oh, with a lot of a lot of prop wash to cross breed corn yeah um because that is very reliant on the wind and this is a little, and if you don't get the wind then you don't then you get, lose yeah. that on your crop so yeah. um so yeah that's that's an interesting interesting way to use the drones as well but it, literally any any industry that you're in i guarantee you there's a use for a drone that is either going to save the company money uh save the company time or it could save a life in a lot of yeah. different ways you know right. so uh you know really uh i think we're looking forward to the future of drones because it's just kind of started right now and especially yeah. in agriculture especially right. in ag so and and then with this beyond line of sight you know if they get that figured out uh that will be hugely beneficial yeah. to to um to, to agriculture especially on huge farm like right. large farms right. yeah i mean yeah you could lose your drone on seven thousand acres yeah you know, <laughs> right. easily right but yeah, if you have all those things built in, you know, where, you know, beyond line of sight is is doable. Yeah. Um, yeah, th it, it it's it's definitely going to ramp up. Yeah, for sure. Uh, did you have anything else you wanted to show? Um, I, I don't. I, I, I Last week we kind of talked about, you know, agras tests, and I still want to throw it out for any new people that were around. But, um, you know, we want to try to hook up with um, – yeah, you know, some or... somebody over at the FAA and and see, you know, is there anything that we could provide them? Because I, I, you know, I guess you know you can give them a bunch of data, but is that data good when it? Do they know, need it, that data? It needs to be crunched and all that kind of stuff. Right. But um, just trying to get the process of of you know getting people able to use something like this, because I understand we're in the national airspace, so you have to be cautious yeah you have to you have to think safety safety is always number one especially with a giant drone that really could hurt somebody right yeah but you know what do we need to do in order to make things safe and also so people feel safe and you know speed up and the they can run it yeah you know safely and efficiently and, uh, and for those that have not watched or listened to us before you know it takes time to, so you need something called your 107 license, which is not that difficult to get. You have to study for a test that's through the FAA. Anybody flying professionally is going to have to have that. Yeah. Um, the 137 is what you have to get a waiver for. And Michael, you explain this better than I do. In terms yeah, it's, of it's, 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 a uh, it's an exemption. It's, yeah. It's, it's a one step <laughs> higher than the waiver, but you're getting exemptions because basically you're becoming a crop duster. Yeah. Um, but you're a crop duster with a drone. So there are differences right? and you have to get, you know, exemptions for those differences. Yeah. You know, so, um, and it can take time. So that's, that's does, the other thing it, people need to know is take time. you're yeah. not going to come to uh, as much as we would love to, uh, for it to be super easy and people just take it off the shelf and go, you know, spray yeah. their field. Uh, it doesn't work like that. There are major steps you have to go through if it's under 55 pounds, yeah. which is easier to get right now and has been faster. More people have been yeah. getting those lately, and we have we have our 137. But over 55 pounds is, is the one right now that is kind of taking a lot of time to yeah. get where it needs to be. I'm sure it's coming. I'm sure COVID had a lot to do with that as yeah, well. Yeah, it definitely did. Yeah. Um, real quick, is there uh, – I'm sorry. Jamie asks, is there an optimal megapixel uh, requirement for mapping and monitoring? models i think it depends on how big you're wanting to how detailed you're wanting the map to be and how big like are you printing this map and making it gigantic at some point um, yeah um, you know uh, i mean I, I i know that uh on on most of these you can you can stitch for like a low res medium res and high res yeah um and that's basically probably more for the speed yeah um 
it's going to be a big file once it's stitches together. Um, this, this map actually was over 3000, uh, images. So you have to think, you know, it's, it's, it's six lenses, right? Two megs each. So that's 12 times, you know, so. Yeah. Right. Sorry, we got a call coming in. Actually, we've been talking for uh, 35 minutes already. Um, that's usually how we limit things. We get to around the 30 minute mark. Yeah. Uh, and that's yeah. kind of, they, they're they sick of us. We we're sick of us. We have to eat every 30 minutes. We have to eat every 30 <laughs> minutes. So uh, we're going to go. But important, go to our website. That's aerialinfluence.com. Click on the agriculture tab. And there you can enter your email address and download our agricultural journey map. That's going to talk about all the steps you've got to take to be able to actually yeah. use a spraying drone uh, and spray from and spray from it. Um, you know, there are other things you can do with an under 55 pound drone, like mm -hmm. spreading, obviously. And we talked right. about that, uh, where you would only need your 107. You wouldn't have to get a 137 if you're yeah. only uh, spreading dry stuff that's not an insecticide or something. Right, right. Yep. Uh, so, yeah. Lots of lots of things that you all need to learn. Uh, you know, we're probably a little further along the way. Michael definitely is way further along the way. Uh, but we're going to try to keep you guys updated on a weekly basis. We're going to try to do this yeah. every week. Hopefully, we can carve out a, a half hour or so each week. But yeah. we really appreciate your comments. Appreciate you guys stopping by. And uh, we'll see you next yeah. time. We'll have stuff to for you to look at, too, a little bit more. Yeah. All right. See <laughs> Thanks. You Bye.